Hey guys, what's going on? Glove Save Gaming back here with another video. In today's video, we're going to be continuing our franchise mode with the San Jose Sharks. We are now on to season number three. If you haven't had the chance to check out seasons one and two, please go back on my channel and do so. You'll get up to date of what's been going on. We didn't make the playoffs the first couple of years. Last season was a little bit better than the season before. Not too much luck though in accordance to being close to the playoffs. Hoping that this season we're able to take some strides and hopefully either get in the playoffs or compete for a playoff spot up to the last couple games of the season. Kind of like a good comparison would be like the Buffalo Sabres were this season. Taking some strides with their young core. Playing some meaningful games. As you can see now we've got the fifth overall pick in this year's draft. First was Michael Misa. We had a couple of AI-generated guys. So we're going to get a pick of some of the guys that I've created in this game or updated in this game at least. Philip Eckberg, Jordan Gavin, Jameson Haggins, Brady Martin, Anton Frondell, Matthew Schaefer, who went first overall to the OHL this past season, LJ Mooney as well, who's on the Kitchener Rangers. I believe he's actually playing with the U.S. National Development Program this year. Let's see who the best option is to take with this pick. So with the fifth overall pick, I selected Brady Martin from the Sioux Greyhounds. Had a pretty solid season with 91 points in 67 games. Past three seasons, his points have improved every year, 41 to 57 to 91. And looking at the guys around him, Jordan Gavin's a 79, same with Philip Eckberg. Matthew Schaefer definitely has a lower overall. It's going to... It's going to take him a couple years to get to the NHL. I mean, we could use Martin in the NHL next year. We do have a logjam of kind of young prospect forwards, though. So I might keep Martin in the OHL for another season. So we do have another first round pick in this draft. We sent Jakob Vrana to the Dallas Stars. We got Lion Bichelle in return along with this first round pick. We've got some good players here in Bill Zonin, Porter Martone, Easton Bits. Cyrus Persinger. A couple of these guys are made up guys. I still think a lot of them are probably at least medium top six, medium top four potential, and hopefully we can snag another good player in the first round of this year's draft. So the 28th overall pick, we ended up picking Bill Zonin, who plays in the QMJHL for Ramuski. He had 40 points in 61 games. I mean, looking at the options around him, he may have been the best guy available. If not, it would have been Porter Martone. I mean, he's a medium top nine in bits. Per Sanger is a medium top nine. Nashville's probably going to be getting at least a medium top nine or a medium top six. After this guy that Carolina took with the 27th overall pick, it seems like there's a huge drop off. It sucks in the first round that we're only getting a guy who's a medium top nine, but that's what was best available at this point. All right, so after the two picks in the first round, I just decided to do the rest of the draft on my own. Carl Axelson is a medium starter. We got at number 37. Finger is actually a 49 overall low elite player. Maybe we can use him in a trade. And Fotinos at number 49 overall is a low top four defenseman. We ended up getting one guy in Lankow who does not have NHL potential. But besides that, every guy that we took in this year's draft has some sort of potential to make the NHL, which is definitely a plus when you're a rebuilding team. I'm pretty happy with this year's draft, to be honest with you. Wish we could have got a little bit better of a player at number 28, but hoping that Brady Martin can make a huge impact for this team in the near future. All right, guys, so we are now beginning the 2025-2026 season. If you take a look at the forwards, you'll obviously see there's a couple new ones. I'll take you through the trades first. All right, guys, so we are now in the offseason. The first trade I'm looking to do of this offseason is send Chris Tanev to the Boston Bruins in exchange for a third-round pick in 2026. Chris Tanev, obviously known more as a defensive defenseman, was pretty good for us last season with 13 points in 82 games. Overall has gone down, though, to 80. He is 35 years old. We kind of have a bunch of defensemen in the system. Not really sure if we're going to have much use for him. A third-round pick seems like a pretty solid return. I know the value is more on our side, but, I mean, this just kind of makes sense at 35 years old. It's not like you'd be getting, like, a first-round pick for him or anything. Going to retain half his salary as well just because we are on the lower side of the cap. Boston is going to be on the upper side of the cap. See if this trade goes through, and it does. So Chris Tannum is now a member of the Boston Bruins. All right, guys. We are on now to the second trade of the offseason. I'm looking to send Fabian Zetterlin, Matt Benning, Hunter Bruskewitz, and a 2027 third-round pick to the LA Kings in exchange for Arthur Kaliev and Jordan Spence. Obviously, Spence and Kaliev have got a lot of potential still. Spence at 24 years old, 85 overall. Pretty good contract. Arthur Kaliev, 
He's only 24. He's on a solid contract at an 83 overall. Matt Benning's going in the final year of his deal at 1.25. Definitely a defenseman the LA Kings could use. Bruce Gowitz is a low top four prospect at 70 overall, 20 years old. Can still definitely make the team. And Fabian Zetterlin is a cur- currently a restricted free agent. Not too sure there's a lot of space for him on this team at this point. He might be playing on the third, fourth line. And he's put up some pretty good numbers. And he wants over $5 million bucks, which is just a little bit too much of my asking price. Let's see if this trade goes through. So that trade didn't end up going through. I'm now going to offer a second round pick and see if it goes through instead of that third. And the trade's accepted. So Jordan Spence, Arthur Kaliev are now a member of the San Jose Sharks. We're going to say goodbye to Hunter Bruskewitz, Fabian Zetterlund, and Matt Benning. So after acquiring Arthur Kaliev and Jordan Spence, shipping out Chris Tanev, Matt Benning, Fabian Zetterlund, and a prospect in Hunter Bruskewitz, this is how our forward lines are looking. William Eklund's playing with Hurdle and Toffoli. Arvidsson's playing with Will Smith and Thomas Bordalo. Third line is Cole Iserman, Logan Couture, and Arthur Kaliev. Fourth line is Tanner Janot, David Goyette, and Quinton Musty. Tanner Janot was one of our unrestricted free agency signings this summer. Brought him in on a one-year deal at $2.5 million. Thought he's a pretty solid guy to have on the fourth line. Help mentor those young players. Taking a look at our defense now, I got Riker Evans playing with newly acquired Jordan Spence, Jacob Trubo with Mario Ferraro, and Henry Thrun with prospect Artyom Levshinov. Hopefully he can have a good season at 19 years old in the NHL. Scratches are Tristan Robbins and Philip Bystad. And in net is newly signed Alexander Georgiev, an 85 overall. Two-year deal at 5.25. Thought he'd be a solid guy to bring in. Then we got Jacob Markstrom, who's currently on the last year of his contract. He's going to be our backup goalie for this season. All right, guys, so we are now 30 games into the season. We have a record of 12-16-2, 11 regulation overtime wins, 76 goals for, 103 goals against, so 2.53 goals for per game versus a 3.43 goals against per game, which is not too good. 29th in the NHL, which is not great either. Not a good start for the Sharks this season. Currently sitting in last in the Pacific Division as well, three points behind Anaheim for second last currently seven points behind the last playoff spot that's not too much but we're gonna have to go on some sort of a run here to be able to get in the last 52 games a look at the scoring for the san jose sharks thomas hurdles having an incredible season right now with 13 goals 22 assists for 35 points in 30 games closest is william Eklund with 24 to foley 23 and then it drops off to the teens 17 15 12 11 10 and then you get into the single digits here some guys will be expecting a little bit more of as the season goes on but hopefully there's just a little bit of growing pains at the beginning of the season here for goaltending alexander georgiev does not have great numbers 889 save percentage 914 and one jacob markstrom has a 910 though he's only played nine games he's three three and one with one shutout i don't know how much you can blame georgiev though we do have a lot of young defensemen on this team i wonder how much of it is growing pains and they're not helping him out too much back there Jeremy Swayman and Felix Sandstrom are leading the league in wins. Sandstrom, that's pretty crazy. A 78 overall in Colorado. I guess he's their starting goalie at this point. I mean, he's playing really well. So Carter Hart looks like he has the best save percentage for starting goalies. It's either him or Vitek Vanacek, who's now a part of the Kraken. Hart has a 922 on the Leafs. Vanacek has a 925 on the Seattle Kraken. Matt Murray still chugging along at 35 years old in the Calgary Flames. 10 games played, 920 save percentage. Let's take a look at league scoring. Nikita Kucherov is leading the way with 53 points in 31 games. Matthew second, Jack Hughes third, McDavid, McCarr, OV, Point, Ehlers, Marnar. From Marner to Matthews, it's only a four-point separation, and there's about seven guys in between there. So, I mean, anyone could win the scoring race at this point, but Kucherov's currently got a six-point lead. All right, guys, so we are now here at the trade deadline with a record of 31-29-2, and 28 regulation overtime wins, 188 goals for, 195 goals against. We've definitely picked it up since the 30-game mark. With 64 points, we're sitting at 22nd in the NHL. But if you look at the division rankings, we are currently only two points out of the playoffs behind the Seattle Kraken with a game in hand. The ball's in our court right now. We definitely got to keep playing some good hockey to get into the playoffs. It's definitely possible. There's some teams that are really close to us in the standings as well. But if we keep playing really well and winning some games, we got a good chance of getting in. So taking a look at scoring for the San Jose Sharks, Hurdles just chugging along, continues to produce at a good level. 64 points in 62 games. Eklund's definitely picked it up a lot, though. He's over a point per game at this point with 63. Toffoli's got 51. Couture, 38. 
Bordalo, Evans in the 30s. Goyette's got 29. Kelly have 26. Janot's got 24. So, I mean, we've got a bunch of guys in the 20s, in the teens as well. No one has single-digit points. Even Artyom Levshinov, 19-year-old rookie defenseman, has got 10 points in 62 games. Look at goaltenders. Georgiev, save percentage has gone up a lot from an 889 to a 903 in this second half of the season. Markstrom's got a 917 in 15 starts. He's been a pretty solid backup goalie. Georgiev does have a losing record, record though, at 23-27-1. Hopefully that can improve by the end of the season. Let's take a look at league goaltenders. Felix Samstrom and Jeremy Swayman still tied for the league lead and wins with 33. Samstrom's got a 9-10s for a 78 overall goaltender. That's really solid. Dan Vladar's got one of the higher save percentages for backup goalies in the league with a 916. Stuart Skinner might be looking at a Vezina Trophy this year with a 915, 25, 17, and 6 with three shutouts, having a really solid season for the Edmonton Oilers. Taking a look at the league scoring now. Still Kucherov leading the way with 97. Matthews got 92. Quinn Hughes McCarr got 84. McKinnon 83. Marner 82. We got a tie with Pedersen, McDavid, Johnny Goudreau for 80, and Brad Marchand's at 79. So taking a look at the standings at the end of the season, as you can tell, we did not make the playoffs by four points. Does kind of suck. We had a good season, though. We started off really poor. I think if we did have a better start, we probably would have been able to get in. Final record of 38, 39, and 5 with 81 points. Definitely made some strides this season, though, and I'm pretty happy with the outcome. So taking a look at the final scoring for the San Jose Sharks, Hurdle and Eklund finish with just under a point per game. 76 for Hurdle, 75 for Eklund. Toffoli gets 57, Evans 49, Couture and Bordalo 46, Goyette 38, Kaliev 35, Arvidsson 34, Will Smith 33, Cole Eiserman 31, Tanner Janot 28, Truba 28, Spence 25, Musty 20, same with Ferraro, Henry Thrun 15, Levshinov gets 10. And honestly, we didn't have a guy who finished in single digits. That's pretty good. Levshinov, I would expect a little bit more as an offensive defenseman going forward, but he's just getting his footprints in the NHL. Georgia finishes with a 901, which is pretty good on a below average defensive team. I'm I'm pretty happy with that save percentage. Markstrom only played in 21 games, 10-6-1, 913. Probably gonna end up letting him go at the end of the season, but a team could probably pick him up as a backup. He was pretty solid. Swayman and Sandstrom tie for wins with 41. Kachekov ends up with 40, so he was just behind them there. Starting goalie save percentage, Vanacek, 50 games, 918. That's super impressive. Skinner, 61 games, 915. Carter Hart, a 912 and 66 games. Soros in 60 games had a 9-12 as well. So, I mean, one of these four guys is probably going to end up with the Vezina Trophy. I'd say it's probably going to end up being Stuart Skinner or Carter Hart, though. They always favor the wins in this game, I find. So, I mean, a guy like Soros with a losing record probably doesn't have that great of a chance. Nikita Kucherov ends up winning the Art Ross Trophy with 118 points, 56 goals. Quinn Hughes ended up ends up with 108 points, but only 11 goals. 97 assists is quite impressive. McKinnon and McDavid have 107 points. Matthews, 106. Jack Hughes, 105. Robertson, Marshawn, Johnny Goudreau, Kale McCarr, 102. Ovi, Pasternak at 100. Dreisaitl, Tage Thompson, Mitch Marner are just behind him with 99. Braden Point ends up with 98. So the playoffs are now complete, and the Carolina Hurricanes have won the Stanley Cup. They beat the Vancouver Canucks in five in the finals. Vancouver, obviously at this point, has been kind of struggling to find success in the regular season to be able to get into the playoffs. In this sim in 2026, they're able to go to the Cup final. They're just falling short. Carolina hasn't won since 2006. It took them 20 years. They finally got it done. For playoff scoring, it's Sebastian Ajo who leads the way with 28 points in 25 games. There was a three-way tie for 25 points of Marshawn Svechnikov, Nikesh, Andre Kuzmenko, JT Miller, 24, Charlie Coyle, 23, Pasternak and Mangiapani end up with 20. In accordance to goaltenders, it's Pyotr Kachekov who gets 16 wins in these playoffs and 907 save percentage. His counterpart in the in the finals was Thatcher Demko, who went 13-9-1 with a 9.06. Jake Ottinger got out in the conference finals. He had an incredible playoff, though, with a 9.31 save percentage, 11-6-1. Taking a look at the league awards, Carolina Hurricanes win the Stanley Cup and the President's Trophy. So, I mean, two years in a row, the team that won the Cup won the President's Trophy as well. You don't really see that a lot. Clarence Campbell Bowl goes to the Vancouver Canucks. Prince of Wales goes to the Carolina Hurricanes. Individual awards, Kucherov wins the Art Ross and the Hart. The Norris goes to Quentin Hughes. The Lady Bing goes to Kucherov. The Calder goes to Matt Vay Michkov with the Philadelphia Flyers. The Consumite goes to Sebastian Ajo. 
The Vesna goes to Vitek Vanacek. The William M. Jennings goes to Pyotr Kochekov. The Bill Masterton goes to Alex Vlasic. The Jack Adams goes to Dave Hackstall in Seattle. The Selkie goes to Elias Lindholm. The Ted Lindsay goes to Nikita Kucherov. The Maurice Rocker Richard goes to Austin Matthews. Thank you very much for watching this video of the San Jose Sharks franchise mode, season number three. We fell a little bit short of the playoffs, but I'm really happy with the strides we took this season. Played some meaningful games near the end of the season, exactly what you want to see. Hopefully we can take some more strides next season and hopefully get into the playoffs. If you haven't had the chance to check out any other of my content, please go back and do so. You can like, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell so you won't miss any future uploads.